Hi, Gil from Testing Gil here. And today, I want to talk about languages. We use those all the time. I'm using one right now. And you understand me because we're using the same one. I know this seems trivial, but in automated tests, we use other languages. And I'm not talking about programming languages. Here's an example. This is a regular web test. We can all understand what it's doing, right? And there's a reason for that. It's because we're used to thinking about elements and how they operate and what we can do with them. But does it tell the story of the application? As you can see, checking that I've read all the terms checkbox enables the button. And when I uncheck it, it disables the button. Let's get back to the test. As you can see, it doesn't tell us the story of the application. It just tells us that we're checking things we're enabling things and we're disabling them. It doesn't tell us much about the meaning behind the checking and the clicking. And with complex tests, that will become a recipe for errors and misunderstanding, which leads to misfortune and despair, which can lead to violence in extreme cases. Anyway, we do that all the time. In this case, I'm using a framework called Playwright but it can be any framework that we use for logging or API testing. Every framework that we use has a wide range of uses. It is intended to be used by everybody. Therefore, it has its own language, and it's very technical. In our tests, we're using elements and clicking and filling. Even the terms enabling and disabling is very technical, but we're so used to that we're not thinking about the meaning behind it. I can change the name of the test to explain its meaning, like this. That's better. But this works because it's a very simple test. With more complex tests, I'll have to leave a lot of comments and explain things as they happen and between the different steps. I can also rewrite the test, like this. Now the intention is much clearer. I expect people to understand, and they will tell me if they understand when we do a code review for the test. Our tests contain multiple languages. We usually mix technical languages or framework languages with a domain language. While it's easy to write or, God help us, generate the first language, the technical one, the second language explains much more about what the test is doing, what it intends to do, and what it's checking. Using the domain language lowers the risk of errors and misunderstanding and bugs. Let's not talk about maintainability, no one wants to go there. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and watch other videos on this channel. And tell me in the comments down below about the most unreadable test that you've ever seen or written. See you next time. Bye-bye.